Nestor Cortez looks like the Nestor Cortez of old, and oh my goodness, there's someone else here. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. I am one of your hosts, Stacey Gotsoulias. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off your first purchase. And with me for the first time, and hopefully not the last, my new co-host, Brian McKeon. Brian, What's up, doing? Stacey? How's it going? How's it going? <laughs> to Amped up you. after Nesta Cortez's performance. Yeah, good good times in Yankee Stadium after an eclipse. So before we get into everything, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on whichever podcasting platform you prefer. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube, like the videos, hit the bell so you're notified when they go up. And coming up on the show, Garrett Cole is throwing again. DJ LeMayhew is hitting again. Plus, we previewed game two between the Yankees and the Marlins. We're, we're going to discuss Anthony Volpe's in incredible performance so far recap the rescheduled eclipse game but first let's get to know brian brian tell everyone who you are how you got here etc <laughs> well i'm i'm brian mccann uh, i guess you could find me at underscore brian mccann all over all the socials um let's see i got into sports radio like five or six years ago i've hosted shows at wfan um i've worked at sirius x and i've really been all over the industry at this point um i love literally all sports it consumes my life i've got the classic two television set up in my living room um and i'm just ready to get amped and talk about the yankees um i'm super amped about this season uh super amped about the future that they have um and super amped to do it with you well thank you it's gonna be fun because i i was saying with my old co-host steve that i had a good feeling about this season i feel like Juan Soto's presence is helping, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But first, let's talk about Nestor Cortez, because what an amazing performance. I mean, I know, okay, let's, grain of salt, it's Marlins. But yeah. I spoke about this on the show last night. I said that the starters needed to last more than four and one third or only five innings. Nestor, eight innings. You can't keep going forward with the the. the plan they've had so far where you're having your starters go very quick into games and i kind of get what boone's doing right he wants to kind of let these guys arms expand a little bit going into the season get them warmed up you don't want to be pitching the meat nine innings to start the season i totally understand that mm -hmm. having said that though the bullpen's going to be fried by june if you play it the way that they played the first two weeks it, it, june, it at this point it's going to it's going to be next week at this point <laughs> exactly you can't keep throwing arms out there and asking for lots of pitches out of your bullpen you have to let your starters give you some length and like you said, grain of salt is the Marlins. And Nestor did kind of struggle in the Astros start, right? You can't ignore that. But but if you look at the way he pitched today, he he looked like that Nestor that you saw two years ago, two, three years ago. He looked like that classic form that you saw, the guy that's comfortable on the mound, that's commanding the mound. Um, I just had a lot of confidence after watching this game. And again, Marlins. So take it with a grain of salt. But overall, you look at Nestor's game and you look at the confidence that he shows in the mound, today's got to let make you feel really good about the future for him this season. Yeah, it was a big difference between his first two starts. You know, everything with Nestor so far this season was watch the first inning. How does he do in the first inning? Does he get out of the first inning without any damage? He got out of the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth without any damage in this mm -hmm. game. He only had two base runners, and it was only one guy. De La Cruz reached twice. That was it. Um, his changeup was working. He threw 11 yep. of them. He got three strikeouts. On the changeup, he got and you can tell with his swings and misses too. Yeah, you can tell with his yeah. confidence too when he's giving you the hesitation on the mound. When he's doing, when he pulls that out of the bag of tricks, that's when you know he's feeling himself. Because a lot of times, Nestor's when he's not doing that and he's struggling, he's out there trying to get rid of pitches as quick as possible. But when he's taking his time, when he's giving you the hesitation, when he's got that swagger out there, that's when you know Nestor's feeling it. And and, yeah. and again, you just this is a start too, especially with the home stand and going on the road soon. You you, you want to kind of finish this series off where. You come back home, you win these games, and you're playing great, and now you go back on the road. You're getting off on a really good foot to start this season. And don't be fooled. They did that last year. So I don't I don't want right. to sit here and say, oh, you know, great starts mean everything. And and that yeah. classic quote, right? You you, you certainly, Stacey, you, you can't win the World Series in April. You can't. But no. you can lose the World Series in April. 
you can play your way out of contention. The Marlins are doing it right now. So it's possible to play yourself out of contention, and the Yankees are playing themselves as one of the top competitors right now in the entire league. Yeah. Uh, they put the stat up that they matched, you know, their best start. But it's a whole bunch of years. But the last time they did it was 2020. And I said out loud, yeah. And they finished 33 and 27 in yeah. 2020. Yeah. So I mean, they they played. And then since that season, they've basically played 500 ball. Yeah. I mean, I mean think, think about where, where, where they've gone trajectory wise. So, but again, you could certainly lose a World Series this time of year. I'm not going to apologize for a good start. I mean, they've gotten off to an unbelievable start. You just got to be careful with things like this before you start. Because you see it all over social media, right? And, you know, we're, we're on Twitter. We see it all the time with Yankee fans. Yankee fans love to jump the gun and love to start talking smack and love to start getting into it. And you just got to be a little careful because this could turn. We've seen it the last couple of years. This could oh, yeah. turn. They're getting off to a great start. The roster looks awesome. The team looks awesome. But let's give it some time. Let's let's let, let that let that steak marinate a little bit, you know? Yeah, because they were like, oh, you know, Juan Soto looks like he's having fun. He's going to want to stay here. I'm like, it's 11 games. Calm down. Because there's yeah, going, exactly. there's inevitably a stretch. Every team goes through it. The best teams go through it because no Wait team has won more than 116 games. There's always a downturn at some point in the season. So let's hold up on that. That's the beauty of baseball, right? And, and, and let's wait till the dog days of mid-June. Let's wait. You know, Juan Soto can be having all the fun in the world right now. Let's wait till Juan Soto's first 0 for 13 stretch at the Bronx. And, and, and when the fans boo him and let's see how he reacts. You know, like, right. I, I, I don't I don't think when I mean, I, I can't imagine Juan Soto striking out three times in a game. So the analogy doesn't even work. But let's wait till Juan Soto goes through a bad stretch and they start booing him. Is he going to walk out to the outfield and, and give me the, the give me the give me the chance? Kind of, He's not going to want to celebrate at that point. Let's see how he reacts to that. So, again, I mean, I'm, we're not we're not sitting here apologizing for this for the hot start. Neither of us are. But. But things can turn, and I want to see how this team deals with adversity. You know, I love the way the Astros series, but was the Astros series a fluke? They swept him, great, and the Astros are good every year, but I don't know if you guys have noticed, the Astros haven't exactly been tearing the cover off the ball since that first series. Right. The Astros have been playing horrible too. So let's let's wait, let it marinate, but enjoy these wins. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Soto. The thing about Soto that I liked tonight was he took a bunch of pitches, his first two at bats, and then he swung at the first pitch in that third at bat and hit that home run 87 miles an hour. And I just love watching him play. I like that he's rubbing off on everyone else because Volpe even said so in his post game interview. And I, that was my thing when they got him, I thought to myself, not only is he going to be a good presence in the lineup and change the lineup, but I felt as if he were going to help the younger kids and so far so good. What What's crazy to me. And j just to like link as a side note, Juan Soto's 25 years old. You guys realize that he's 25 years old. And he's got numbers that uh, are, that are, it's very similar to a top 10 player in the history of the game. I mean, he's got numbers that guys like Mickey Mantle even put up before in the history of the game. When it's, when you take into account the on base percentage and the batting average, he is an all-around player, and, and I don't, if you listen to the broadcast today, you heard Paul O'Neill say it for a little bit. Juan Soto, his game, right? Yes, can he take advantage of the short porch? Absolutely. But Juan Soto is not a pull hitter. He's not a power hitter. He's not a John Carlos Stanton type player. He can go to any part of the park. He puts together professional at bats. He walks a ton. He, I mean, you saw the the, the double that he had today, right? He sprayed yep. that ball all the way to the other side of the left field, and then he and then he pulls the home run ball. So he that that today's game is, is a microcosm of what Juan Soto's entire career is, right? I mean, you're, you're yep. putting in long at bats, uh, walks at the right time. I mean, you, you saw it the game before, right? With the judge home run. Who walked before the judge home run? Who got on base? Who caused that more damage? I mean, you, you've heard it all offseason, and it just bears to be true, right? The deeper this lineup is. You have guys like Juan Soto get on base. Hopefully when you get DJ back, and we'll have some news on that later, you, you get DJ back, he gets on base. It, it creates more pressure. And then you have the times where if Stanton's going to be a guy in his career, later on in his career, what you're seeing right now, where he's only going to take advantage of mistakes that other pitchers make. Well, guess what? If there's two, three guys on base while Stanton gets up, there's a better chance those pitchers are going to make mistakes. When the Bronx oh, yeah. crowd is cheering and going crazy and it gets in their head and now they got to face John Carlos Stanton, who they know any little mistake is going to be hit out of the ballpark. Uh, guess what, Stace? I, I know that you know this. When there's three guys on base and guys get nervous, John Carlos Stanton has the power to take advantage of those mistakes. So maybe he's not going to put yeah. 
which he did yesterday, right? So maybe yeah. he's not the play, he's not the Juan Soto type player anymore, where he's going to take advantage and then he's going to work out great at bats, right? He might be striking out so many at bats in a row, but look at how quickly the tune on John Carlos Stanton turned in two days, right? We were all mm -hmm. we we all we all wanted him off the team two to, three days ago because he goes he yeah. he came in, he's in half of his at bats were strikeouts, and Stacy, look at it now. I mean, he's got. Two home runs in the. I mean, he's playing unbelievable now. And now everyone wants. Now everyone's talking about how deep this lineup is with Stan in the middle of it. This is what a player like Juan Soto does, though, because because Judge has been this kind of player. But have the Yankees had this guy in their lineup since the 2017 year when this kind of era kind of started? No, they, they haven't. No. no, no one really has. But so that's the thing. Like you get a player like this who stretches out at bats, who gets on base consistently, it just creates more opportunities for guys lower in the lineup. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're going to go into the next segment. We're going to talk about Anthony Volpe, but we're going to continue talking about Monday's game because there's more to talk about for Monday's game. But first, don't forget, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button on our videos, hit the notification so you know our videos go up. Also, reply to the pinned comment on our videos from Monday through Thursday if you want your questions answered for Fan Mail Friday. Or you can join the Locked on Yankees Insiders Club. There's a link in the description. You'll get text from me. You can text me questions. And I'm thinking we're going to set Brian up on that too. There's a 14-day free trial. It's a lot of fun. There's a good group of people in there. And yeah, it's just a lot of fun. So again, coming up next, more on this game and Anthony Volpe's incredible start. If you're looking for tickets for just about anything, check out the app Game Time. Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and shows near you. Baseball in New York is back in full swing, and Game Time has deals on tickets right up to moments before your event starts, and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last-minute seats. So if you decide to go to a 7.05 game, but it's already 6.30, and you think it's too late to find a good deal, it's not. You can also find exclusive flash deals on and sponsored deals on basketball, Football, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. For a limited time, all users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the Game Time app with code First Pitch. Terms apply. That's code F R I S T P I T C H for $20 off until April 14th only. Download the Game Time app. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And don't forget, you can catch every pitch of the Yankees' hometown broadcast with Sirius XM. Just download the Sirius XM app and search the word Yankees and you can listen to John Sterling and Susan Waldman. John Sterling is so excited this year. I feel like his home run calls are like times 100 because I think he's nearing the end. The man is 85 years old. So maybe he's just, getting, might be. he's just as excited for baseball as all of us are. Maybe right? that could be. I don't know if you get this way because I'm certainly this way. When once football ends, that period of like fe mid February, especially before spring training starts, I feel like my head's going to explode. I don't know what to watch. Like I, I got I, I, hockey's on, but it's once every two days. It's I, I'm going crazy. So I, I'm so grateful it's back. Appointment television. Yeah. yeah. Now let's quickly talk about uh, other aspects of Monday night's game. Okay. So I said on Monday show that the starters needed to last longer to save the bullpen. And then Aaron Boone brings in Josh Macheski, Macheski, I think that's how you say it. And yes. he comes in <laughs> the ninth inning, makes his major league debut. He's been in the minors for a while. He's 28 years old. He pitches a one, two, three inning only on four pitches and all three ground balls go to John Birdie at third base. I was like, wait, the ninth inning's over. How did this happen? Like, I love stuff like that. And it was just that, type of game for the Yankees two hours one minute 
It's the shortest game since June 12th, 1992. Now, the Yankees lost in that game. They were shut out by Cleveland and Charles Nagy. But still, it's been a really long time since the Yankees have played a game that crisp, that clean, and that quick. Or anyone in baseball, for a matter of fact. I mean, we're almost under the two the two hour mark. The only people I feel bad for, because us at home, it's beautiful. If you go to the game, imagine spending, like, I, I, to me, going to a game is an all-day experience, right? You, you get there, you open the cooler, you have a, you stop at stands or billies. It's supposed to be an all-day experience. And then all of a sudden, you get into the building and the game's over already. I was yeah. looking at the, at the watch. Stacey, it was like 8 o'clock and the game was over. And we're supposed now, thinking to- about, <laughs> Yeah, thinking about the old stadium. When I used to get stuck, I went to the food court maybe one time in the old stadium because I was stuck there one time for, I'm not even kidding, five innings. Now, if this game were played on that night, I would have missed the entire game being in the full really? food court. No, no, you can't you, you, you can't get up. And that's why you, you got to do what I do. Because I, I didn't even mention in the in the intro, I'm a Yankee season ticket holder. And my seats are strategically right behind the beer garden and the bleachers. So I, I know, I know as soon as the inning ends, ground ball, get up, go get your drink right back by the inning starts. That's what you have to do now. You have to have it yeah. strategically planned out. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, what else with the game? Okay. So Soto's first home run, uh, Volpe had hit a three run home run. He got into it with the home plate ump because he got screwed on two calls. And what's he with did. the umps? This year, um, well, I mean, you know, th- th- this year, but look, can we can we give some knowledge? I mean, I know I wasn't on the show yet, but Angel Hernandez yesterday made a complete fool of himself. I mean, that that the, the first inning, what, what what is going on? I mean, that that's when you go to umpire school. I feel like they show that pitch of to define what a balk is. <laughs> yeah, in umpire school, they they show that highlight, and, and instead, Angel Hernandez is like, nope, Glaber's got to be set to strike out. I, that I couldn't comprehend. I mean. I don't I don't want to remove the human element of the game. But sometimes when right. I see plays of that, I'm like, give me the robot ump. Give me the robot ump. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm sick of it because those kind of calls, I you can't anymore. And there was also a ball. Uh, wait. Yeah. A ball called against a Yankee as the Blue Jays were pitching. That was like mm-hmm. literally right down the middle. It's like. Yeah. Yeah. And they showed it happening? actually. If, if you go online, they, they, someone put it in the MLB, the show video game. Uh, stance of like where the pitch landed and it was literally down the middle. <laughs> it's absolutely hysterical. Uh, you did want to discuss this though, and I, I think it's a oh, watch this segue that I'm going to do right here. Ready? Every ball doesn't matter whether it's in the middle of the play, off the play, anywhere it is. You know who's connecting with all those balls? Anthony Volpe. I mean, yeah. the, this kid. I mean, and he and he had so- signs of it last year. Right, you he saw did. last year he had the power. It was just he was being a rookie. He was chasing balls that were out of the zone. He wasn't really knowing how his at bats, but he was being a rookie. And you have instantly seen the work that he's put in this offseason. You've instantly seen him grow and mature as a player. Clearly, the, the 148 plus games that he played in last year rubbed off and worked. Oh, yeah. The playtime helped. Uh, Stacy, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know about you. You're seeing, I mean, this kid, he's he's got the top average in all of baseball right now at 417. He seems like he's getting on base at will. I mean, he's, and, and again, it's everything about his game. In the third inning today, the gold glove play that he made, he's showing why he won the gold glove. I mean, a gold glove play that he makes in that game at the plate, he's a menace. You know, the power is there. I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, you were a little skeptical last year towards the end of the season. It looks like now they've definitely got their shortstop in the future. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, I, like you said, the work he did in the winter, changing his swing path to make it less um, less uppercut, right? Because that's what mm-hmm. his problem was last year. And it's such a stark difference from 2023 that in some at bats, he looks like a completely different player. And he looks like the type of player I want him to be, the one that gets on base, hits singles, hits doubles, goes on the bases, wreaks havoc. And then he also can reach down and hit a three-run home run 388 feet like he did on Monday night. Do you know, do you know what my dream for him is, though? Uh, uh, my dream is a leadoff hitter. Uh, I think I think mm-hmm. he has oh. all of a perfect leadoff hitter in him, right? He's got the speed. He can get on base whenever he wants. And he gives you that little bit of pop when you fill out the bottom of that order and the seven, eight, nine guys become on base guys. He can give you that pop in the seventh inning when you need a home run really badly. He can drive one out. He can be what DJ LeMahieu was in 2018, 2019, right? And yep, I want him to be that for the next 10, 12 years. And I, I don't think the Yankees trust him in that role yet. But my right. ideal thing by June, July, by the All-Star break, is Anthony Volpe's in your one hole, and now you can slide Glaber down to the six or the seven hole, and then Glaber becomes that 2018, 2019, 38 home run Glaber Torres because he's got a position where he can drive guys in. I mean, that the line just becomes so much more deeper at that point. I just, you rarely see rookies that come in and they struggle 
And the next year, they just hit the ground running. And Anthony Volpe has done that times times 30. Literally. Um, yeah. I want him as leadoff. I've been saying that Locked On Yankees listeners and viewers on YouTube, leave in the comments. How many times have I mentioned that I want Anthony Volpe as leadoff? I've been singing that tune since spring training. I just, I and want he, it to happen so he badly. he got the opportunities last year, but he, he wasn't ready for it. He got those right, opportunities no. last year. He, they did give him some leadoff spots, and I think they see that in his in his they they envision that in his future. But he, I mean, there, there were times last year where he just looked completely lost at the plate and couldn't figure it out. He looks like a different baseball player right now. He looks like that yep. that that foot number five overall prospect in all of baseball. That's what he looks yeah. like right now. Yeah, he's also gotten bigger in the off season, but not too big. Like you can just tell, he's maturing a bit body yeah. frame wise, and. He's the type of guy who, uh, you know, I think back to the dynasty years and when it was Knobloch and Jeter at the top and it always seemed like they were on base and setting up for O'Neill and Williams and those guys. And I feel like Volpe is the perfect guy to do that because he can get on base. He can steal second or steal. Yeah. Steal second. And then someone just needs to hit a single and he scores. And I'm if the even, Yankees I just do that all the time. They're gonna and be well, great. It's not, and, and well, it's not even that, Stacey. I mean, uh, you can look at it double, triple fold, right? I mean, Anthony Volpe, if he draws a walk, gets on base, if he's got a reputation around the league for stealing bases and being able to run, pitchers are now focused on something other than the at bat with Juan Soto. They're they're not focused. Oh, and then on, they're going to uh, throw a horrible pitch to Juan Soto. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, 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 it, and it trickles down, and that's why what the point that I made of this line, this lineup being so deep, and that's the perfect point, right? Because okay. What if Soto misses a pitch, which rarely happens, but what if he, he shanks one, pops it up to the left fielder, and it gets thrown back in, right? Well, the next the next batter is Judge. And then after that, it's Stanton. And throughout the entire time, Volpe's on first base, dancing around, going back and forth. There's something else on the pitcher's mind. It just it runs so deep. And once Volpe's at that point, which, I mean, at this point, it, we could be by May and he could be leading off with how well he's playing. Uh, but the problem yeah. is Glaber's playing well too. But if you, if I, my perfect vision of this season is they're playing well by the all-star break and Volpe slides right into that leadoff hole. Yep. I think it needs he to be mentioned too. The... It needs to be mentioned too, Stacey. And I'm, 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 I'm sorry, but like them keeping the, the lineup consistent all year too. I think that's helped Volpe out too. I, I know, I know you mentioned it to me earlier that, that consistency, baseball players are creatures of habit. And I think oh, yeah. keeping that consistency on this team uh, is completely different than what they did last year. I mean, what do you think about that? How the lineup's been pretty much the same throughout the entire season so far? I'm liking that we're not getting the uh, punting a lineup thing mm -hmm. when they're about to sweep, which Boone was known for a few seasons oh, yeah. ago. It seemed like every time they were about to sweep, they're like, oh, okay, let's put the C lineup out. And, you know, mm -hmm. he's not doing that. I like it so far, but I feel like Boone's, job is a lot easier now because like we said i mean juan soto changes that lineup so much you know verdugo oh. is kicking in also he's yeah. starting to do things and it's just so long if all the, the that lineup is so long if all those guys are just doing anything if someone's walking if someone's just hitting a single like they don't need all need to hit home runs just get on base oh. and if it's like right now it's glaber soto judge stanton rizzo like just that lineup is insane it's absolutely it's, it's insane. so deep. It's it's got to be a nightmare for any any opposing pitcher coming in. I can imagine yourself so sitting, on the, sitting, sitting on the flight coming in and and thinking about the nightmare of what I mean when you have guys like Verdugo at the bottom part of this order contributing. I mean that's 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 terrifying. I mean so, but again, this is all when baseball players are creatures of habit like this. Having them play at the same, knowing every day coming into the ballpark, being at the same position, knowing where you're going to be batting, that helps a player out a lot. And I feel like last year you came in and, and, and Judge was batting second. Then he was batting third. Then he was batting fourth. And then Stanton was batting third. And then Stanton was batting. They're all over the place. That consistency, that that mold. The great Yankee teams that you saw in the 90s, every day it was the same lineup. It yep. was the same lineup pretty much every single day. And you need that level of consistency, Stacey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Coming up next. Previewing. Game two. Marlins. It is Puck against Rodon and then because it's a Yankees podcast we have injuries update uh, injury updates as usual because they're always injured players on the Yankees
Prize Pick is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get into action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch those winnings roll in. Spring training is over and baseball is officially back in season. Don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from your diamond in your prize pick entries. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize pick entry today. As for the NBA, getting on getting on playoff action, it went up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. So download the app today and enter code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's code locked on MLB. All one word and all in lowercase letters, and get that first deposit match of up to a hundred dollars. Join Prize Picks today. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV. Mom, I made it. In the free Fire TV channels app, Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7. We're covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every single League. Find Locked On Sports Today now available, the free Fire TV channels app. And remember that you can catch every pitch of Yankees hometown broadcasts with Sirius XM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Yankees. Stacy, we got to get into the next series, uh, the next game of the series. The, the, this next game two against the Marlins coming up tomorrow night. Um, well, I guess tonight it will be considered, right? Because this comes out tomorrow. We record the night before. Yeah. It's a whole thing. Yeah. Rodon <laughs> versus AJ Puck. And I know that you've loved the way Rodon's pitched so far this year. I've had a little bit of a different, different feeling. This is a huge year for Rodon in general with Yankees Nation. How are you feeling about this game going in and Rodon going up against this Marlins team? Well, with what I've seen from the Marlins so far, he might throw a no-hitter. <laughs> <laughs> we can only hope. <laughs> that would be great. That would be really great. Um, they've obviously they've pitched the same days. Uh, they were the second, they're the second in their rotation, Puck and Rodon. And Rodon has had two no decisions in his two starts so far, but he's done a bit better than Puck. Puck, who his first start of the year, not great. Two innings against Pittsburgh, four runs on three hits with six walks. And one strikeout picked up that loss against the Angels, a little better with four innings, two runs on five hits with three walks, five strikeouts. So that's <laughs> it's always better when you get more strikeouts than walks. So he's better in that second start. Still not great. Rodon pitched a full inning more in Arizona. Now, if he could pitch two more innings against the Marlins, that would be great. I would love that. <laughs> I think this is a key year for Rodon, especially with the way that last year went for him. And getting off to an early early start is going to be huge, especially with Cole out. Because you see what having your ace does to a team not playing, right? I mean, look at Alcantara with the Marlins. He's been out. He's out the entire year. He's been out, and they're struggling. It makes guys like Puck having to pitch higher up in the rotation than you want him to. Carlos Rodon is the perfect number two starter for this team. He's a lefty. He's got a Yankee Stadium type of delivery with pitches. He gets ground balls. He fools guys out there. He's the perfect guy to be behind Garrett Cole. The problem is, Stacey, we haven't seen him prove that. Like last right. year, he was not the perfect guy behind Garrett Cole. And if he can come in, ingratiate himself, be the quote-unquote ace of this staff until our guy playing catch is ready to come back, <laughs> well, then, I mean, then, then this team only ups itself so much more. We spent this whole podcast pretty much talking about how deep their lineup is, right? And how good their bullpen's been. If this pitching rotation rounds into form and Rodon, who maybe he hasn't gone late into games because Boone's playing a little careful with him because he's been injury prone in his career and he was injury prone all of last year. He had the little back problem in spring training that you heard about for a little bit. So maybe Boone's being a little too a little cautious with him. It's just going into these games, if Rodon can ingratiate himself, and this is the perfect start to do that in, but if he can ingratiate himself with this Yankee fan base, because he didn't get a chance to do it last year, and he can become the quote-unquote ace of this staff until your $38 million a year guy is back, that is huge for this team, huge for this staff, and huge for Carlos Rodon. Because yeah. I, we've said, if you looked at before they signed him, Stace, 
he was one of these guys that that he was one of the top tier pitchers in baseball. He deserved the salary that he got. I thought it was an awesome signing when they picked him up. And then he didn't live up to it last year. And that happens. I think he had a rough year. He didn't get off. He didn't get off on the right on the right start coming into the year. There were a lot of reasons why Carlos Rodon didn't succeed when you need when he, when he should have succeeded last year. But now he gets yeah. a fresh start. He has a chance to be the best pitcher on the staff coming into the year, be the ace of this staff, and going into a Marlins start right now, perfect timing. Go out there, dominate this team, go seven innings, and get your first win of the year. And do what you are built to do if you're Carlos Rodon. I think it's a perfect chance for him to get going. Yeah. Also, hang out with Nestor, figure out what he was doing, throw your cutter, because they're just going to swing at things with the way they were <laughs> swinging well, well, on Monday he, night. <laughs> he was in He was in the school of Garrett Cole, which I don't know if you've realized in the broadcast that the school of Garrett Cole is rolling every single night in that dugout. I mean, mm -hmm. it, Garrett Cole, to me, looks like one of those guys who's going to become a pitching coach the second he retires. Because he is oh, yeah. all about being on that bench, talking about what pitches the guys are throwing in. And Rodon was right next to him today which I love mm. to see. If these guys are all clicking and talking about different things, if they're doing that in the dugout during the game, what do you think they're doing on the plane? These guys are all talking to each other about this all the time. So I got a lot of confidence from Rodon going against tomorrow's game. Now you mentioned Garrett Cole. He is play. He's played catch. So we're getting you, closer to everything. But you've played Thank catch God. before. You've played catch yeah. before. Were you throwing 100 miles an hour a week later? Yeah, no. How confident uh, are you in that? Yeah, well... I don't want him to throw 100 miles an hour until uh, it's absolutely necessary because I don't want anything happening to that elbow. So he made 25 throws at 60 feet on flat ground, said the session went great. He said 22 of 25 in the chest. I'm always counting. It's hard to turn that off. <laughs> uh, he said he'll have two more throwing sessions during the week of April 8th to the 14th. So this week, that's mm -hmm. per Yankees.com. And in other good news... Oh, DJ LeMayhew taking on-field batting practice and fielding ground balls. So LeMayhew is one of those guys. I feel like Garrett Cole will tough it out and Garrett Cole will come back healthy. I don't think I have any evidence to believe that won't happen. LeMayhew, I've got the complete opposite. I've got plenty of evidence to prove to me that that, that that will happen, that he won't come back, he won't be healthy, He or he'll come back and he'll play 20 games, but he'll be hitting 115 and everyone will start saying, what's going on here with LeMayhew? So mm -hmm. LeMayhew's got a I, – I feel weird saying this because he is such a great player, but he's almost got to prove it to me. I've got to see DJ oh, yeah. LeMayhew like play well for weeks at a time before I can start taking him at, before I can start in, putting him in the lineup every single day, every single day. Cause Stacy, he hasn't been able to stay healthy. And I, no. I, I loved the contract when they gave it to him, but that contract has looked awful since they've given it to him. He cannot stay on the field. He has not remotely resembled the DJ LeMayhew of that year prior to the contract year that, 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 that you had. He hasn't been that guy. And that's really upsetting. And, and I want DJ to be out there for DJ's sake. Stacy, they need him out there consistently. So I'm glad that he's looking better. I'm glad that he's taking batting practice. I'm glad that he thinks he's close. But when he gets he gets back, he's another guy. Has to hit the ground running. Has to play well. He can't afford to struggle early on. Yeah, no. And then one more guy trying to come back. Tommy Canely played catch on April 6th. He's expected to throw some bullpens this week, which will be good because the bullpen needs another oh, arm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and Tommy Canely is a very valuable piece. He saw the way the Dodgers is in the last two years. Like, guy that throws 100 miles an hour and has a change up like him that, that can drop at 88, 87 miles an hour. I mean, Tommy Canely is a is a really valuable piece in a bullpen. And, and the year that they had him, too, I feel like he he never had a poor, had a, had a poor outing. So, I mean, yeah. Tommy Keelan's a guy that, that they're, you can tell Aaron Boone's uh, chomping at the bit to get him back. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Um, DJ, on the other hand, I don't know. Tim seems to be okay without him. I mean, it's good to have the extra person, obviously, mm -hmm. and it's good to have him around because he's a good, he's good at what he does. But, you know, people forget that when they got you, DJ LeMayhew, they didn't even start him opening day 2019. Troy yeah. Tulowitzki was playing in the infield. You know, Which DJ so LeMayhew, they were thinking, about. They were thinking, oh, okay, he could kind of be like our utility guy and we'll use him for this and that. And then he was like an MVP type player for two seasons. So you just have to try and get him back to that form. And it's yeah. difficult, but even if he can be a you know a half of what that player was and he inserts in the seven or eight hole in your lineup, that's fine by me. He's a great fielder. And if you can get him back to that role of where again, we're not asking for the 338 hitter to return, but if he comes back and is a 290 hitter. And, and gives you, you know, 13 homers, 60 RBIs, I'll take that. Especially deep yeah. in this lineup, if he can hit in the 7-8-8 eight, eight, eight hole, I'll take that. But you need him to prove that he can stay on the field. Yeah. 
Yeah. Plus DJ, you know, can play first, can play third, can play second. He's still okay in the field. You know, he's getting up there in years uh, for baseball, not for real life, but for baseball. So, oh, um, life, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would be good for him to come back uh, just because it's always good to have DJ LeMahieu on the team. I mean, it makes the lineup that much better. Yeah. Feared header. Definitely a feared yep. header. Okay. We got to end this. We're going too long. <laughs> I One more to say time. One thing, though. Did you oh, did you realize yeah. the, the 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 fun fact in this game that I I, I wanted to bring up a Yankee fun fact? I feel like oh, I gotta no. give I gotta give something to my first show, right? I gotta leave you wanting more, right? So the Yankee fun fact of the day that I wanted to give out: uh, Nestor Cortez. This is the first start of his career against the Miami Marlins, which is his childhood team that he grew up loving because he grew up in the area of Miami. First start of his career. But Stacy, did you know that he appeared in a game against Miami early on in his career as a pinch no. runner? Nestor Cortez came into second base as a pinch runner early on in his career. So it's not his first appearance against his hometown team, but it is his first start, and he dominated them. Unbelievable. Maybe we should make this a feature. You can have a fun fact of the day. We can try. It'll be hard, but we could try. We could try. So one more time, don't forget to join the Locked On Yankees Insiders Club. There's a link in the description below in a 14-day free trial. You get texts from us. You get you can text questions for Fan Mail Friday. And speaking of Fan Mail Friday, leave your questions under the pinned comment below to get your questions answered for Fan Mail Friday. But if you join the Insiders Club, you get priority. But I'll still answer the questions. We'll still answer them on YouTube. Don't worry, YouTube. And remember, you can catch every pitch of the Yankees hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SiriusXM app and search for the word Yankees. So that's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Yankees. I'm Stacey Gonsoulias. And I'm Brian McKeon. We'll see you guys tomorrow.